tires. Check the tires daily or before the first flight of the day with the tires at ambient temperature. Remove the valve cap and connect the pressure gauge. Inflate the tires with nitrogen or deflate if necessary to keep it within specified limits. Disconnect the pressure gauge. Check for leaks and reinstall the valve cap. Towing with tow bar. Make sure all ground equipment is removed from areas adjacent to the airplane and all external services are disconnected. Disconnect the nose landing gear torque link. Connect the tow bar on the nose landing gear. Connect the tow bar to the tractor. Remove the wheel chocks from all tires. Release the emergency parking brake handle. Tow the airplane slowly straight ahead before turning. Complete the airplane towing in a straight line for a minimum of 3 meters, 10 feet. Set the emergency parking brake and remove the tow bar. Connect the nose landing gear torque link. Seat belts, wheel chocks as required. Parking. Emergency parking brake. Set. Flaps. Up. Gust lock pin. Install. Doors. Close. Landing gear safety pins. As required. Wheel chuck. Install. Covers. Install. Mooring as required. Mooring. Mooring is necessary when the weather conditions are bad or unknown. The area where the airplane is to be parked in and moored must be paved and level with ground tie-down anchors available. Hold the airplane in the parking area with nylon ropes. Attach the rope to the mooring attachment point and attach the anchor with a bowline knot. Pressure refueling. Make all grounding connections between the fuel source, the airplane and the fuel nozzle. Energize the airplane with an external DC power supply or set the power selection switch on the refuel control panel to battery position. Make sure the refuel switch is in the closed position and the left right tank lights are on. Actuate the lamp test switch and check all lights are on. Actuate the increase decrease switch to select the desired fuel quantity. If the quantity is not selected, the refuel will stop at the maximum capacity of the tank or when the operator closes manually the refuel valve. Remove the pressure refueling adapter cap. Connect the fuel nozzle to the pressure refueling adapter. Open the valve handle on the fuel nozzle. Pressurize the fuel system from 10 to 50 PSIG. Make sure that the left tank and the right tank indicator lights are on and there is no fuel flow. Make sure the fail indicator light is off. If the fail indicator light is on, stop the refueling procedure immediately. Set the refuel switch to the open position and make sure the left tank and right tank indicator lights go off. Actuate and hold the shutoff test switch up and observe the left tank and right tank lights on and the fail light off. When fuel in the tank reaches the desired quantity, set the refuel switch to closed and check the left hand tank and right hand tank lights come on and the fuel flow stops. If fuel overflows, stop refueling. Close the valve handle on the fuel nozzle and disconnect the fuel nozzle. Remove the ground cables and de-energize the airplane.
Gravity for refueling. Make all grounding connections between the fuel source, the airplane, and the fuel nozzle. Open the gravity filler cap and introduce the fueling nozzle into the gravity filler neck. Start the fueling operation and monitor the fuel quantity in the tank by checking the refuel control panel or cockpit indication. After reaching the desired fuel quantity, close the gravity filler cap and remove the grounding cables. Oxygen servicing. Filling operation is carried out as follows. Check the overboard discharge indicator to make sure the oxygen has not been discharged. Open the oxygen compartment door. Remove the protection cap from the fill valve. Connect the pressure oxygen servicing regulator to the oxygen source. Connect the oxygen charge adapter to the oxygen servicing regulator. Connect the oxygen charge adapter to the fill valve and make sure there is no leak. Monitor the pressure gauge of the aircraft and of the high pressure oxygen servicing regulator. Wait at least 10 minutes to let the temperature of the oxygen cylinder become stable. Close the oxygen servicing regulator shutoff valve. Carefully disconnect and remove the oxygen charge adapter from the fill valve to release the remaining pressure in the hose. Reinstall the fill valve protection cap. Close the oxygen compartment door. Waste tank cleaning. Open the access door. Remove the rinse nipple cap from the RTS rinse valve. Release the handle of the RTS service panel drain valve cap and open it. Connect the lavatory dumping coupling of the lavatory servicing cart to the RTS servicing panel drain valve. Connect the lavatory filling coupling of the RTS rinse valve and push the lever of the RTS service panel drain valve to open its internal flapper valve. Pull the T-handle out and turn it to lock the RTS waste drain valve in the open position. Continue the waste tank drainage until the waste flow stops. Flush the waste tank with water through the RTS rinse valve for about three minutes. Unlock and push the T-handle in after all liquid is drained. Disconnect the lavatory dumping coupling from the RTS servicing panel drain valve. Disconnect the lavatory filling coupling from the RTS rinse valve. Close the cap of the RTS service panel drain valve and latch the lever. The flapper valve closes automatically when the cap is closed. Install the rinse nipple cap on the RTS rinse valve. Close the access door. It will close only if the RTS waste drain valve is correctly closed.